One of the amazing things the Main Street News has allowed me to do over the past few years has been to travel to Disneyland Paris more times than I've ever been able to. With these trips, I've become more familiar with the parks, their quirks, and their problems. And believe me, there are quite a few. Inspired by DLP Welcome and their amazing article, I decided to make a video regarding exactly this. So today, come along as I go over some of the most important problems Disney's Parisian Resort has and a few ways they could fix them right now. Oh boy! Before we begin, if you enjoy my content and this video, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing as I upload weekly videos on theme parks from the past to the future. If you want to go the extra mile, consider becoming a channel member. You can find me over at Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and in the Discord community where theme park fans come together. Links are in the description. With that, let's dig in. Let's start with something that's quite troubling for the future of the resort, and that is old rides. Attractions can be timeless, with stories and characters that inspire generation after generation. What isn't timeless are the rides themselves, the tracks that hold the runaway trains, the bullet to the moon, or the pirate boats in the Caribbean. Some ride systems are more durable and don't get as many problems as they age. However, some can get extremely rough with the passing years. This can be seen in some of the most popular attractions in the park, like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. This roller coaster, the first to go upside down in Disney history, opened back in 1993 and possessed many theming elements that are no longer visible. The biggest thematic downgrade were the wooden sleepers under the rails, that made it seem a much more real work site. Unfortunately, with the removal of these, the ride looks much more like a simple roller coaster. However, in this case, the real problem doesn't lie with the thematic downgrades, but rather the ride system itself that in the past years has seen more and more touch-ups. This normally happens when the coaster is at the end of its life. In Disneyland Paris, the coasters and attractions are always in their limit, year-round, which puts much more stress in a system that is built to last some 20 years. Well, Indiana Jones has been open for more than 30, and the welding efforts are showing exactly that. So, what's there to do? Well, normally with a ride this old, there are two options. Either demolish it or retrack it. The second option would see the complete change of tracks with newer models and technology that lasts longer and can take more stress, but it's also a costly update. So far, there hasn't been a retrack in the history of the resort, and Indiana Jones isn't the only one that needs it. Big Thunder Mountain, one of, if not the most popular ride in the park, is in a very similar sorry situation, perhaps even worse. During the scheduled maintenance, that's getting longer and more complex each time, teams weld the tracks together, fixing everything that needs to be fixed in order to comply with the safety rules. The teams do an amazing job every year with this work, but when does it become too much to handle? My guess is soon. So will Disney invest in a complete retrack by then? Will they do it to one attraction and completely remove the other from the park lineup? Hopefully this is decided upon soon. This now leads us to Space Mountain. This attraction is a prime example of what's wrong with Disneyland Paris management. First of all, it has many of the problems we already discussed, even if these aren't as bad here due to it being relatively younger than Big Thunder Mountain and Indiana Jones, but also inside, which brings less damage from the elements. It does have one very important difference, the launch. Since opening, this element has been causing downtime and maintenance periods since its cable needs to be swapped every six months or so. With the passing of the years, the longevity of the cables has gotten worse, with it now lasting less time than it used to, leading to even more maintenance periods. To give you an idea of how bad this can become, let's take a look at the past month. From May 13 to 17, the ride was closed for scheduled maintenance. 
It did not open until the 19th. Since then, it operated with many breakdowns for days, and it closed down once again for a week on the 27th. This proves just how bad the state of the attraction is. And once again, it has nothing to do with the hard-working maintenance teams. They are keeping it up and running for as long as possible. I'm not even going to dive into the mess that the thematic elements of the ride are, from the temporary Star Wars overlay that's about to be installed for longer than the original theme from the Earth to the Moon, to the actual, originally cheap effects just straight out not working. Outside, the situation is as dire as inside, with nearly all the lighting not working or barely working, it truly is in a sad state. The situation should be fixed soon with a brand new lighting package, but the fact it has remained like this for as long as it did is ridiculous and gives off a very bad image of the resort, especially with the current prices. Which leads us to the next topic. The Disney vacation has become more and more expensive in the past years, not just at Disneyland Paris, but every resort around the world. The hotels and tickets are one thing, with high prices on both, even the new annual pass program that offers less for more, removing perks such as a special entrance, or the infinity reserved nighttime show viewing locations are just a few examples. The biggest device in cost and quality is, by far, the food options. Disneyland Paris, a resort located in one of the cities with the best cuisine in the world, is lackluster and expensive to say the least. Something like a pretzel bread sandwich should never be 10 euros and a half, or a croquemus skewer for 10 euros. The restaurant menus have also seen price increases and the removal of desserts. The quality of the food doesn't justify the prices either. While there are some very good food options, these are mostly reserved for the higher-end restaurants like buffets or the table service ones. The restaurants and food locations also have another problem – being understaffed. This happens more often than not, with everything from the huge Hyperion Cafe to the small stands like Cool Station, creating very long lines with hungry guests waiting too long for an expensive and, most of the times, not great product. This way, when you combine everything from parking fees, tickets, food and others, it can become truly very expensive. So, with the higher prices, guess you have a better experience, right? Well, more and more, we see Dizzy push their mobile app. Here guests can see wait times, order food, buy premier access and others. The Disneyland Paris app is the worst Disney Parks app in the world. It constantly breaks down and logs you off. And you find yourself typing out your password several times a day. Many of the features aren't handled in-app, but rather a browser it opens, taking a very long time to load. One of the most badly done features has to be the food ordering. For this, I tested the Walt Disney World app and the Disneyland Paris app. Same restaurant, same order. A classic, Casey's Corner hot dog with fries and a Coke Zero. The Disney World app opens everything in-app, being fast all throughout and accepting Apple Pay. Paris's app opened a browser, asked me to log in, after I did so earlier in the app itself, let me chose the items and when I went to pay, it showed me all the billing details for some reason, and opened yet another page to pay where I need to fill in the card details every time I want to order something, and after all this, an email is sent and I need to click on it to receive my food. It's an awful app, and it's a ridiculous experience for the guests that just want to spend money on overpriced food. The seasons are another thing that has been downgraded in the past years. Before, we would see special firework displays for days like St. Patrick's Day, but no more. The actual Halloween and Christmas seasons have less offerings, with old parades and decorations that get reused every year. Most of the park doesn't get decorated either, with just Main Street USA during Christmas and Frontierland joining it for Halloween. Many of the old special offerings have been forgotten as well, which together with everything else just doesn't make a trip during these times as special as they once were. Now, don't get me wrong, I truly enjoy Disneyland Paris. 
I wouldn't be talking about it every week on this channel if I didn't. And there's a lot it does right too. From the amazing new electrical sky parade to the seasonal Avengers campus activations. But it still has many issues and what I hope is that a few of these can be resolved. There are many, many more I didn't mention in this video. Problems like the unjustified change of the background music loop from Front Lot. I did make a full-on article about it that I invite you to read if you have time. Now, let me know, what do you think are the worst problems in Disneyland Paris? And now, as always, thank you for watching and that's a wrap.